cataclysms are going to happen uh, on or near December the 21st, 2012. Is there anything in what you've studied, anything in, in your magnetic reversal research that would indicate that? Not really. Uh, I remember when I wrote the, the first book, I, I was just basing it purely on science, and I hadn't even heard, uh, sorry to say, but I hadn't even heard of the Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, now I have because so many people have called in and asked about it. But uh, maybe it's right. I have no idea. But I, I've, I haven't run across anything that would lead me to believe that that, that is the date. It may be. I don't know. All right. But what I do know mm -hmm. is, um, you know, one of the one of the books that I quote in my book, in, in Magnetic Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps, is is a, a book called The Cycle of Cosmic Catastrophes, and it's by uh, uh, physicist Richard Firestone and, and geologist Alan West. I mean, it's we're talking high high powered people here, and they talk about these Carolina Bays from from. Uh, 12,000, 13,000 years ago, about the time of the magnetic reversal. And they talk, you know, when I say that I, I think radioactivity will accumulate on our planet, well, they discovered that the, at this same date as, as the magnetic reversal, radioactivity levels in the soil. In Hate to do it, but a break's taking over. We have to step away. Let's check in right there when we come back from this break. We'll be back, folks, right after this. Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. We're talking with Robert Felix, and we're talking about magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps. All right, now, you were telling us about a study that was done, uh, and, and um, then we had to go to break, so I want to give you the floor. Okay. You bet. Well, one of the things that I had said, one of the ways I think these evolutionary leaps occur is that as as our magnetic field strength declines, it allow it takes away our shielding, and our our magnetic magnetic field actually shields us from cosmic cosmic rays, radioactive. Well, these scientists that I was talking about, uh, these physicists and and uh, geologists from from about tw in studying soils in about twelve thousand years ago in Arizona, in Michigan, in the Carolinas, they found that those soils were had 2,000 times more radioactivity than normal. So it, it, there it is. It shows up in the record. Uh, and, and as I did my studies, I found that the same thing has, has occurred in sync with the magnetic reversals 11,500 years ago, 23,000 years ago, 33,500, is that the, the amount of radioactive strontium uh, spikes at these times, that the, the, that the amount of beryllium-10, which is radioactive, uh, spikes at these times. So I, what I'm seeing is, is that this has to, I, what other choice is there? Is it has to lead to mutations. I think this is uh, this is what causes those leaps. There is no missing link. Is that is that we do take and and this is not just myself. I mean the paleontologists. I think the, one of the big ones was uh, Stephen Jay Gould of Harvard. Uh, is, is he said that all paleontologists know that the fossil record contains precious little in the way of e intermediate forms transitions between major groups are characteristically abrupt. That, that's Stephen Jay Gould. He even he wrote a book called Punctuated Equilibrium. And, and what he's saying there is most species remain largely stable over long periods of time, and then some cataclysmic event sets rapid change in motion. He says that evolution tends to, to happen in fits and starts, sometimes moving very fast, sometimes moving very slowly, or not at all. 
And I think we'll eventually find that that evolution essentially moves along very slowly and gradually for 11,500 years, and then wham, we we have a a jump. Uh, And I think that eventually the study of of our magnetic field will show that. Okay, so you're saying this cycle runs in about 12,000-year cycles. It's, well, it's about 11,500, and the reason I say that is, is, is it's tied in with precession, what's called precession of the equinoxes. Uh, and let's see if I can explain that in a... In a well, I think we, we understand what the precession is. Okay. We, we, we understand that, um, uh, you know, the, the, the earth, the, the axis of the earth lines up a degree... Um, off of where it is, yeah. and and every so many uh, thousand years, and then it's another degree and another degree, and I think it's about fifty six thousand years uh, for it to go all the way around. Twenty five thousand eight hundred. Twenty five thousand eight hundred. Okay. <laughs> so you're probably talking about two times around. But yeah. here's the thing, though, is that and and this kind of messed me up at first when I was researching this because. Ice ages come along, major ice ages about every 23,000 years, with with smaller ones at the halfway point at 11,500. And so I'm I'm saying this doesn't tie in with precession of the equinoxes because precession takes longer. But then one day I found out that our solar system also precesses. It also has its own uh, its own rotation. And so our precession in relation to the solar system takes up 23,000 years. So I'm thinking, and this is still not proven, this is, this is certainly a part of my theory, but I think that every 11,500 years as we are going through this precessionary cycle, uh, that we somehow align with some part of the, the solar system's magnetic field and and wham, we have all of these things happen at once. I, that's the only explanation I can see at this time. All right, well, let's, somehow it's an alignment. Let, let's talk a little more specifically about the cataclysms. Uh, you were talking about, you know, uh, the, the one where uh, the woolly mammoth, uh, the mastodon, and other big animals, mammals, went extinct. Why? Now, well, and, and let, me, let me throw one more thing in there. And sure. some of them have been found with uh, the food that was in their mouth quick frozen still in their mouth. Yes. So I have, why? What's up there? Well, I have one chapter in the first book, and not by fire but by ice, called Nine Stories of Snow a Day. But I think that that's essentially what happened. The, the, the area, there were areas of the world where the snow was coming down so hard and so heavy that they literally had three, four, six stories of snow per day, which would have trapped these mammoths in one day and buried them, and and there they were, frozen. Uh, Because some of those mammoths have been found standing up. And, And scientists, even till this day, I mean, the ice, they still find mammoths as they're, they're melting out of the ice. By the way, anybody who says the ice is melting, well, yeah, it's been melting for 11,500 years. But as they, as, as the ice melts, they're finding these mammoths. They figure there, there may still be more than a million mammoths frozen in the ice. But some of them have been found standing up and some of those mammoths were are, the meat is still bright red and fresh looking, and they've had occasions where where Russian scientists have fed mammoth meat to their dogs, and the dogs loved it, no problem. The, the 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 people didn't quite get up the nerve to eat it themselves, but but their dogs loved it with no bad no bad effects at all. So. Very, very, when it does happen, uh, I, I see the, the ice ages coming along with it, and then I see the other thing is carbon raining from the sky. Uh, 11,500 years ago, or 12,000, however you carbon date this, but these scientists have found nano, what are called nano diamonds, just littering the landscape. And some of these diamonds were, were small. They were, they were the size of, of 
cold viruses, but other diamonds big enough to to uh, to be seen with a naked